welcome, welcome to story time with me, Miss Sheila. Hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day. Today's story is going to be in South Africa in um, Soweto, and it's about when they had an apartheid, and in 1976 when the students had a, a protest, a peaceful protest, to not, like, against their education laws that they were having. And so this is the story about Hector. So it's called A Boy, A Protest, and the pro photograph that changed apartheid. Soweta, Saturday, June 12th. Hector is an ordinary 12-year-old boy. His weekends are filled with playing soccer, doing chores, watching his favorite movies, and visiting his family. When Hector... Here's mom call his traditional name. He drags himself away from the game because it's time to head home. So you see him there playing. After his regular chores, Hector offers to run errands for his neighbors to make some pocket money. Back at home, he counts how much he's made and he'll use it to buy movie tickets and some candy. On Saturday afternoons, Hector and his friends love watching movies at the nearby church. He watches his hero, Bruce Lee, on the screen, who never disappoints. On the way home, the boys reenact their favorite scenes from the movie. Hector keeps his friends entertained. Hector says, focus on your opponent. Your mind is your best weapon. Don't slip. Granny Ma's house, Monday, June 14th. After school on Monday, Hector is happy to see his sister at Granny May's house. Granny May calls Hector in and gives him some money to take home to Ma. On his way home, Hector cuts through the field, the quickest way from Granny Ma's house. It's also his favorite play playground where he practices his Bruce Lee moves. Out of nowhere, bullies appear and grab the envelope of money. Hector wrestles it back from them and runs through the thorny black jacks of the, of the field to escape. And he pulls himself together as he tries to shake off the unusual encounter. That's shocking to have two guys come up to beat him up to take the money. How oh, rude. Hector thinks about telling Mom about the bullies, but decides he'd rather not worry her. Ma gasps as she at the prickly sight of Hector, because he has all the furs all over him. So here now he has to take them off. And he even here it says he's got this one, he's got one in his bum. He has to take it out. Soweta, Wednesday, June 16th. The sun's not up yet, but Hector is, but Hector is. It's a day just like any other as he gets ready for school. Ma, can I wear my long trousers today? No, you know the school uniform is shorts. But it's so cold outside. One day we're going to have a bathroom inside with a hot tap and a toilet. You are always dreaming, dreaming and joking. Oh, Mom, thank you. Are we going to practice some karate moves after school, Hector? Oh, right now I'm practicing. Legs are cold, stands. <laughs> See, it's freezing. And then here, this says whites only. And then it says non-whites only. So that's what segregation means. Like whites go one place and then everybody else goes another, which is wrong. This is the sandwich stand as they're on the bus. And then, why is nobody going to school? Oh, they didn't find out about the protest, maybe. The schools are open, but students aren't going in for classes. Hector and his friends are drawn to the sound of chanting and singing. Everybody is marching in Orlando Stadium to protest a new law requiring students to teach we, we, oh, sorry, new law requiring schools to teach half of their lessons in Africana. More students join in and soon hundreds, then thousands of people are marching. Hector is swept up in the excite, 
excited activity of the crowd, of the growing crowd. When the first hippo truck blocks the street, they come to a halt. So they start marching, and then there's the big truck that stops them. Oh, and there's a big dog. Not to be intimidated, the students turn and march down another street toward the stadium, waving signs. They sing the government band's anthem, God Bless Africa. Hector soaks it in the meaning of the beautiful song. Here are petitions. God bless us, your children. The police, angry at the crowd's disobedience, confront them again. The students don't retreat. The police blow their whistles and shout threats. Their dogs bark. A canister of tear gas explodes in the air. Pow! Hector looks around frantically for his friend. Then he hears his sister's familiar voice. Hector, you shouldn't be here. We have to get home now. Oh, bang, 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 bang. So this is Antoinette. Granny May's house on Wednesday, June 16th. The sun's not up yet, but Hector's older sister and Antoinette is. She and some of her cousins stay with Granny May because her house is closer to their school. At least Ma can save train fare for one of her children. Antoinette keeps the rumor about the protest to herself. She has a feeling there won't be any school today, but she takes her school bag anyways. No need to worry, Granny Ma. At school, Antoinette finds a crowd gathering in the street, singing the band anthem. Excited protesters arrive carrying signs and, and pepper the singing with shouts of their demands. So there's all the people shouting and protesting. Ow! Tear gas explodes in the air. Students scatter in all directions. Then Antoinette spots Hector amidst the chaos. Hector, you shouldn't be here. We have to get you home now. Bang! As the smoke clears, Antoinette sees a teenager bending over a child lying in the street. He gathers up the child in his arms and runs towards a car. She can't see the child's face, but when she sees his shoes, run, help. So I think it might be her brother. There's Sam. He's the photographer. So the same day on, on June 16th, the sun's not up yet, but photographer Sam is. He's already working out on an assignment for the world newspaper, covering the growing student protest. So you see, he's capturing all those pictures. The protest begins, the students march, snap, Sam snaps photos, the police arrive, their dogs bark, Sam snaps photos, the police barricade, uh, barricades go up, the children sing, Sam snaps photos, the police shoot, Sam snaps. Sam knows he's been, he's seen, um, Sam knows he's seen something important. The police think so too. They destroy all the film that they can find. But Sam is one step ahead of the police. He's already hidden the most precious roll of film. I think he, looked, he, I think he put it in his sock. When he's safely away from the action, he sends the film back to the newspaper's office to be developed. And look, there's the picture. This photograph of Hector, Antoinette, and another student turn, runs on the front page of the newspaper. That evening, the world lies. The world lies on Granny May's kitchen table. 
Hector never came home. Nothing quite like this had ever happened before in South Africa, not to school children, not to an ordinary boy like Hector. Hector lives on a compelling Hector lives on as a compelling symbol of the cost of apartheid and the change sparked by students that day. Oh, so that is him in the picture and look at his family seeing him and his sister and he's being carried by the other teenager out of the, that war zone. Oh, and then it here is just um, more about that day. Whoa, what a hard story, but it's a story to remember. So we never let something like that happen again, that everybody should be treated equal and everybody has a right to live their life and be happy and free. So I hope that this will, will be a book that will remind you to keep strong and to keep fighting and to love everybody. Until next time with me, Michilla. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. Take care. Bye.